What is good, YouTube? This your boy, Aaron. It's Brian. This is the Courtside View Podcast, and today we are talking about the NFL. We are giving our predictions for each game, and it's that time of the year, QB tier list. We're halfway through the NFL season, so I feel like it's appropriate to now give our tier list for all the starting QBs in the NFL right now. Always an exciting time of the year, especially... You know, some people may feel some certain type of way about our tier list, but I don't give a damn. This is our tier list, and you're just going to have to deal with it. All right, before we get to the tier list, I want to talk about the games real quick. We have some enormous implications in the NFL. Number one, obviously, the Lions and the Packers. That's going to be a huge one, but... I could find some. We have the Dolphins and the Bills, Ravens and Bron. We got some pretty decent matchups going on. But let's start off with the big game of the week. The one that's going to shape the entirety of the NFC. The Lions versus the Packers. NFC North divisional matchup. Huge playoff implications are on the line, especially in the division. I said this in the previous podcast, but I don't think the Packers are going to win this game. I think Detroit, they're just flying on all cylinders right now. They're averaging over 30 a game. Like, their offense has been electric. Uh, Jamison Williams, he's going to be out with an injury, but not with an injury, but he's going to be suspended. He didn't play last game, and it didn't matter. They still, still scored over 40. I think this game is not going to matter either. I believe Jordan Love will play. He did practice either Wednesday or Thursday, and I believe he's going to get it to get it go. No matter if Jordan Love is playing or not, I have the Lions winning this game. I think the problem with the Packers is this is just a bad matchup for them because what the Lions can do, they can run the ball effectively, and they have the best offensive line in football. One of the better offensive lines we've seen in the past five years, honestly. like That's how dominant they've been. Jared Goff, he is just throwing the ball with consistency, with efficiency. He is an MVP candidate right now, and they still have Amara St. Brown. They still have Sam Laporta, and I already mentioned those two running backs as well. I just like the Lions this game. It's just, it's just a bad matchup for the Packers right now. You have to get consistent pass rush play in order to defeat the Lions, and Ever since the Lions lost to the Buccaneers, not one team has really sort of um, rattled them that much. The Vikings, they, they had an opportunity, but at the end, the Lions were able to prevail. And I just think even on the road, it's, it's going to go to the Lions' favor. What about you? Yeah, I'm going Lions all the way here. Uh, you know, it's just – it's really because the Packers' defense – you just you got to generate pass rush on Jared Goff. You can't let him sit back in the pocket all day and let him find open dudes. And that offensive line is one of the best in the league, probably the best in the league, honestly. And you couldn't generate pressure against – who did y'all play last play week? Jacksonville. The Jacksonville mm-hmm. Jaguars. Uh, now, but then again, your defense, for some reason, seems to play to the level of competition. So we may see the daggone 85 Bears Sunday. That's not going to happen. But – off off the pickums, I'm just I'm gonna just go with the Lions. They've been on a roll. Run game has been dominant. Uh, Jerry Goff has been playing good football, turnover free football for the most part. Yeah, and I and I think yeah, they, they just execute better than y'all. Jordan Love, he needs to not turn the ball over yeah. this game because. They, there's a guy on that line of defense by the name of Brian Branch that has been a turnover machine this year. Mm-hmm. And we all know Jordan Love likes to play that risk-taker ball, that Brett Favre-esque ball. Yeah. And he will take chances. And he can he is susceptible of getting fooled in pre-snap curve. Sometimes it looks like he's predetermined and throws or he's just throwing stuff. And it's like, well, what were you looking at? Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's just like you can't do that against a, guy, a, a team like the Lions. They will just run out on you quick. But at the end of the day, it's divisional football. Who knows what's going to happen at this point? I mean, I have I, I have a good idea what's going to happen. I, I just think that you, you got to show me that you can match up with the Lions. I just don't think they can. 
it's just a bad matchup. They, the defense has been tremendous this year, but you know there there comes a point where even though you your defense has been good, even your defense can be a bad matchup towards an offense like the Detroit Lions, who can pretty much do anything. Like they can throw in the air, they can run the ball effectively. There's not much that you can really take away from them, other than just putting a hat on Jared Goff. You got you have to rattle Jared Goff and. So far this season, he hasn't been rattled too much. Like, not many teams have really gotten the best of this Detroit Lions offense. And I just don't think that the Packers is going to be that team that finally figures out the formula to defeat Jericho. I, I just don't see that happening right now. They're just too good of a team. Um, I'm trying to find the – and I'm, I'm looking at the injury report. Let's see. Because this is important as well. So, because Jair Alexander, he's questionable. I, I – let me let me tell you this right now. I highly believe he's not going to play that game, so that mm. that's just going to be another thing that they're going to have to deal with. And um, who else? Who else? Evan Williams, the safety, he's out of the game. So yeah, man, like two key pieces in the secondary, more than likely are going to be out. I just don't see how the Packers are able to uh, prevail in this instance. They're going to have to score points, and I just don't think that they that Jordan Love and this offense will be able to um, keep up with the Detroit Lions because, again, like you mentioned, Jordan Love, turnovers. He has to eliminate the turnovers. He has to take care of the football against this team, and I don't think he's going to be able to do that. I think he's going to throw a pick or two, and that's going to be the difference in this game, and that's why they're going to lose this game. Yep, pretty much. And it's really trench for trench. I'm taking the Lions. Yeah, I'm honestly. taking the Lions. Uh, um, yeah, that the defense for the Packers, it's not even close. Like The Lions' offensive line is just – it's the best offensive line of football, and you can't generate pressure, then you're not going to beat this team. All right, let's go to the next game on the docket. Um, Let me see. Let me see. Commanders versus Giants. I'm going Commanders this game. I know it's a divisional game, but the Giants, you lose your, your top left tackle. They haven't been the same since they lost Andrew Thomas. Andrew, Andrew Thomas? Yes, Andrew, Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas. They, yeah, lost season for them. Daniel Jones, that game against the Steelers, they had an opportunity, but again, giant fashion, they lose the game. I don't see how they win this game. Yeah, I mean, the only saving grace they really have, they got Malik Neighbors and, and Tyrone Tracy, but other than that, the commander's been on a roll. We all saw that Hail Mary last week. It's just like, well, yeah. who's going to beat this team? Mm hmm. So, and I don't think there's going to be the Giants. The, the Giants, it feels like they got over, the commanders got over that Giants hurdle this year when they beat them previous uh, in the season. So, I'm, I'm going to go with the commanders, man. The you Giants see, haven't shown me much of anything that makes me think they're going to win this game. See what happens when you get a QB? You can actually beat the sorry teams in your division. You can actually beat the Giants for no, once. When you get a QB and put them in a system that suits them. That's true. Yeah, good point. Good point about that one. I'm looking at the injury report, and it seems like the, I mean, no Cornelius Lucas, but I think he was out the last game. Yeah, which is you know offensive lineman, but mm -hmm. for the most part, everybody else is going to be fully ready to go. So I th I think they'll be fine. Brian Robinson, I expect him to play. He was a limited participant in practice. He's questionable, but I think he'll play, especially against a divisional opponent. So yeah, man, give me the yeah, honestly, give me the, probably don't even need to play. <laughs> yeah, give me give me the Commanders this game. I think they're gonna be play extremely better than they did week two, when yeah. it was like a nail biter game. I know it's a divisional game, but man, this is Jaden Daniels. This offense, this team, is just it's on a Cinderella run right now. It's just you can't make this up. I said it's gonna feel like 2012. Well, damn. It's better than twenty twelve. Yeah, about to say six and two, second second in the conference. I will say to the Giants credit, they haven't just laid down no, this no, season. So no. they've been competitive yeah. for sure. So that that goes to coaching again. So if they're gonna after the season, I don't think they should fire. Heck no, Brian they should have fired Brian Dable. But they me? need to get a QB. Yeah, yeah, they need to get a QB. All right, let's go to the um. Let's go to let's go to the Dolphins versus the I feel Buffalo like Bills. A lot of games this week have 
really type produ- this, this is a thing. That ain't a 50 50 game buffalo and Dol- oh, yeah, miami no, no, no. i'm going buffalo no. all day bills every day. own my it's not it's, i'm not falling for that trick again no, no, i no, fell no, for no. it last earlier in the season it ain't happening twice no, 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 fool no. me once shame on you fool me twice I ain't gonna be no fool me twice no. i'm going to bills yeah, like the Bills are just they're riding on a high cylinder right now. Um Miami, they're they've been struggling. They just lost to Arizona. Yeah. Tua The season might be over for them boys, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I think it is yeah. over for them. Tua, he's a roller coaster. I, I don't see them getting much better. This this team, this this defense is very old. Um you, you mentioned Jalen Ramsey, he might be a good dude. He might be on a good dude candidate because he hasn't been that level that we've seen from him. This year, like he he got cooked by um, Marvin Harrison Jr. He he just doesn't look the same, and I don't know why they gave him that new deal when he's thirty years old. So, <laughs> we're going yeah, not not much to say on this matter really. Like the Dolphins have been playing, the Dolphins haven't been playing well, and the Buffalo Bills they they've just been playing extremely well. I mean, get Amari Cooper, Keon Coleman's playing a lot better. James Cook, he's always going to run well out the back backfield, and you have those tight ends. They just have everything you want. The defense isn't the greatest, but they're, they're a bend, but don't break defense. Even with DeMar Hamlin as, as your safety, your starting safety, it doesn't really matter because they'll, for whatever reason, they schematically match up well against the Dolphins. They, they make it, they make Tua feel very uncomfortable. They confuse him a lot, and Tua – Many times, will you throw a pick, fumble, just do some dumb stuff that you just scratch in your head? It's and because the, the the Dolphins don't play physical, nope. and the Bills will play physical with you. Yep, and and remember, before the season starts, I think Jordan Poyer, he says something to the effect of, hey, we think y'all are soft. And, you know, now he's on the Dolphins, mm-hmm. and he said, hey, when I was on the Bills, we were looking at you like, y- y'all, y'all kind of soft, and nothing has changed. Let's go to the let's go to the next game on the list. Let's go to the let's go to the Broncos versus the Ravens. Two, now, this this is, is interesting matchup. I, I still got the Ravens. Yeah, me too. Of course, because it's Bo Nix played good last week, but it's still Bo Nix. But I mean, but the Ravens defense ain't honestly. No, it's not it's all not that good, good to really harp on. Mm. I don't think I don't think this this nine point five spread should be in Baltimore's favor. That is insane. They are at home. True, but that Broncos defense is very stout. It is, but I will say this though: the the problem with the Ravens, they play with their food too much. They play they play down to their competition, but when it's like a really really good team, they will show up. I think this game they're going to show up. Um, the Broncos they have been playing a lot better, but I. I don't see the Ravens losing two games in a row. I don't think they're going to lose a game at home with Lamar Jackson, with Derrick Henry. You bring in Deontay Johnson via trade. So that offense is – it seems like they're really riding on that offense. Yeah. Because the defense – man, they need a pass rusher. We, we already mentioned more. They need a pass rusher. But it just seems like right now the offense is where it's at, and I expect them to score some points. Denver defense has been playing really, really good football – but against Baltimore, I, I expect Baltimore to score at least 20 points against this team. I think they're going to win this game they going score away. At least 20. Bo Nix has been playing a lot better, but against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, I don't see them winning a game on the road against the Ravens. So give me give me the Ravens this game. Yeah, I'm going Ravens. I, I, if I if I bet, I'd take the Broncos spread, though. That nine and a half is crazy in my opinion. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. On the road, that's kind of tough. All right. Let's go to Chargers and Browns. Chargers and Browns. Give me this the Chargers. Is, well, actually, you know what? This is a, a little interesting. It's an interesting game because now James Winston is starting a the quarterback. They're going to be at home. The Browns offense looked amazing last week against the Baltimore Ravens. Chargers the, do have a better defense, though. Yeah. Um, and that was a divisional game. Right, right. Browns are at home. They are at home. I don't – here's the thing, though. I don't trust James Winston. <laughs> He's done this before. Where yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll have one great game. He'll fool you. You're like, wow, James Winston is a really good QP. And then the next week or the next two weeks, pfft, there's a reason why he's a backup QB. Give me. I'm going to go with the safe pick. I'm going to go with the charge this game. 
I expect James Winston to go back to doing dumb stuff. I think he'll throw a pick or two. I think the Chargers defense, they have film on him now. They have film on that offense with James Winston. They'll figure out a way to stop whatever that James Winston was doing well with. And I think the Chargers defense is a little bit better than the Ravens defense right now. Kind of like a lot of bits. So, so give me the Chargers this game. I think they're going to do a good job of running the football. Justin Herbert's going to keep the ball uh, out of harm's way, and I believe they'll win this game. It's going to be a low-scoring game, but ultimately I think whoever takes care of the football – Whoever makes the plays in key spots will win the game, and that's going to bowl well for Justin Herbert. Yeah, this is definitely one of those whoever makes the – Three biggest yeah, plays. First three big plays is going to win. Um, I'm going to say the Chargers. I'm going to go with the Chargers because I, I just trust the defense to not let wide receivers get wide open <laughs> when the game is on the line. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going I'm to go with the Chargers. Like a Cedric Tillman, you're not going to yeah. see a Cedric Tillman just get me wide open in the zone. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and here's and I think the Chargers, they're, they're a bit motivated because of what happened against Arizona. They want to sort of rectify what happened on Monday night because that was just an awful performance by them, you know. Justin Herbert threw for over 300, but all them receivers and tight ends, they couldn't get open. Like none of them was really getting open at all. And, um, you know, this, now that I think about it, oh, I don't know. You lose to Arizona? They beat, they, who did they beat last week? Was that the, was that the Raiders? They, they beat the, um, oh, that was the Saints they beat up on okay, last yeah, week. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right, they're right. They, they did beat the Saints last week. But it's the Saints, though, like the Saints suck. Oh. <laughs> You know what? I'm, I'm gonna just stay with my charges. I'm gonna just stay, I'm I'm gonna stay, just with, stay the with the charges. I'm gonna just stay with the charges. But this is a this is a game that it could be a coin flip, honestly. Uh, let's go to the Bears versus the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Bears we saw last week they lost to the Commanders. Hail Mary play, yada yada yada. Arizona they 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 did beat the um who did they beat. They beat they beat a pretty solid the Dolphins. team. The Dolphins. Oh no no no! Dolphins suck. Yeah, they, so they beat the Dolphins in a nail biter. The public is on Arizona. Yeah, a lot. I've heard. Yeah, Arizona's at home. They did do a good job of getting Marvin Harrison moving, getting him open, getting him easy easy looks. But I'm gonna go with the Bears in this game. I think the defense is gonna show up. I think the the Arizona Cardinals. Offense, I need to see more before I can really believe that they finally have something. They are fin- they finally found an identity. They finally found a way to get Marvin Harrison the ball. I, I got to see it to believe because only one game, that's a small sample size. I got to see it more consistently before I before I am like, oh, yeah, the Arizona Cardinals, that offense, they finally figured it out. And and Kyler Murray, he, he's a roller coaster. He's up and down. Like one, hit, one game, he'll be amazing. The other game, He'll be mid, so I, I got to see some consistency before I'm really ready to give the Arizona Cardinals the edge. I can say the same for the Bears at times because they have been rather pedestrian offensively. Like they, They'll have two games where their offense looks amazing, and then all of a sudden they play a halfway decent team, and they can't they can't throw for anything. They Caleb Williams is running for his life. He barely has over 100 yards, and the the offensive attack, the the wide receivers are just, you know, for whatever reason, they they're not getting their yards, they're not getting their touches, they're not getting their receptions. Like DJ Moore and um Romo Dunze and um Keenan Allen, you're like, how are they not getting the ball? So these are just two bad offenses. These are two bad offensive schemes. But I'm gonna go with the team with the better defense. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Bears because, like you said, the better defense and. I think after that blunder last week, Shane Waldron is going to have to cook up something, or that seat going to start warming up because mm-hmm. they this is a the Bears have a good roster they and do. they got a lot of weapons on offense and they need to find a way to get all of them involved. Yeah. Shoot, Cole Komet, he was he's one of the better tight ends in the league. He he caught maybe one or two balls last week. Like, come on, what are we doing here? And it's just like. Yeah, man, Shane Waldron, he's going to have to cook something up. But on the other side, Drew Petson is going to have to cook something up on Arizona's side too because that division, the NFC West, it's winnable for the Cardinals. But so, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the Bears. Yeah, for sure. 
Let's go to the 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 Jaguars versus the Eagles. I'm gonna go with the Eagles this game. The Jacksonville. They, they can't be trusted. Nah, they cannot be trusted at all. They're a bad football team. Eagles have been playing a lot better, but they are beating bad teams. Like it's not like they're they're beating like really really good teams. Like they're they're beating some of the some of the uh, bad teams in the NFL. So I'm still gonna go with the Eagles. And hey, they're at home. They're playing a bad team. It seems like another good game for A.J. Brown, Saquon Barkley, and Jalen Hurd. So, yeah, that's how I look at it. Let's go to the divisional game. Rams versus Seahawks. I already know where I'm going with this. Seahawks, and, Seahawks are at home. I'm going Rams. You're going Rams yeah. without possibly Puka Nakua? Oh. oh, shoot. The Seahawks don't got DK. They, he's, he's out? Nope. I mean, yeah, he's out. And Noah Finn is out. Wow. I'm going Rams. I think they just got the juice right now. The Seahawks, they so-so. Sometimes they play good, sometimes they don't. Last week they got embarrassed by the Bills on their home field. The Rams, I feel like the Rams smell blood in the water. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I'm going to go through Rams. Yeah, no no DK Metcalf, no no Fant. I like the Rams this game. Their, Their defensive line has really gotten it going. Yeah, I'll go with the Rams this game. Matthew Stafford, he's starting to warm up a little bit. Uh, Cooper Cup is back. You still have Kyron Williams. You still have um, you still have that running attack. I like the Rams this game as well, even even on the road. But it seems like Seattle's like their their home field advantage that they used to have is just non-existent nowadays. Yeah. Like teams could just come in and be effective, just run the ball, don't turn the ball over, and you pretty much are gonna get a W in Seattle. And then Seattle's defense, I mean, their their offensive line is bad. So, what what do the Rams have? A good defensive line. So, I think that they'll take advantage Jerry of that. Verse, yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. We got the Colts versus the Minnesota Vikings, the 8 o'clock game. Why is this 8 o'clock? Makes no sense. But, <laughs> regardless, Colts versus Vikings, no Anthony Richardson. We all know why. Um, Joe Flacco is starting, but they're going to be on the road in Minnesota. Give me Minnesota. <laughs> I think the Vikings win this game going away. They um, just looking at the injury report. Make sure I'm not. I'm not. Um, they they T.J. Hawkinson is back, so that's another weapon on that offense that they could definitely utilize. Aaron Jones, he's going to play. Um, pretty much a lot of the important people are going to play. Harrison Smith. Um, he did not practice, but it doesn't say that he's out or questionable. So it seems like he'll probably play. Um, yeah, it seems like all the important people are going to play this game. So give me the Vikings this game. I know they, um, Christian Darisaw, he's out for the year, but the Colts defense isn't all that great. I think they'll figure out a way to prevail. Yeah. Give me the Vikings. The Colts are just, the uh, Vikings just a better team in my opinion. Mm-hmm. All Sam Darnold has to do is not screw up. Literally. And throw the ball to Justin Jefferson. 200 yards, preferably. But the Colts have been playing a little bit better. I mean, that they're 4-4. Four four. But give me the better team. Let's go to the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. This is the Monday night game. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs going away. They're at Kansas City. Tampa Bay is dealing with injuries. No Mike Evans. No Chris Godwin. This is a home run. Yeah. This is pretty much a home run yeah, for Ch- me. Chiefs defense. Yeah, and that defense is going to be electric. Yeah. I expect Baker Mayfield to throw a pick or two this game. Oh, yeah. He's been he's been throwing them let's, this year. Let's see. What other games we got I know on the dock? Raiders and Bengals. Raiders and Bengals. Yep. Give me the Bengals this game. Um, Listen, the Raiders... I'm just not sold. Uh, they're just not a good football team. Bengals aren't a good football team either, but this seems like a game that they'll they'll win just for the simple fact that they're playing the Raiders. The Raiders are just not good. If it was like a divisional opponent, if this was like a, you know, a, another really really sorry team, like the Bengals are bad, but they're not the worst per se. So, yeah, man, just give me the Cincinnati Bengals mm-hmm. with Joe Burrow. Yeah, give me the Bengals. All right. Um, Saints and Panthers. This is one of them coin toss, ga- coin flip games I was talking about. But Bryce Young is the QB. He is. But I think I'm going to go with 
the Saints. I'm looking at the injury report. Derek Carr, he he was a limited participant in practice. I think I think they'll win this game. Um, I know Marshawn Lattimore is out. I know that Kool Aid McKinstry is out, but I I think the Saints are just a little bit better. They have a little bit better talent than the Carolina Panthers. I just think the Carolina Panthers are a lost cause. Like, I don't. Adam Thielen might play. You trade away Deontay Johnson. I know Xavier Leggett. He's getting a lot better, but. I just think they're a lost cause right now. And any team that the Carolina Panthers face, the Carolina Panthers are going to be underdogs. So give me give me the Saints this game. Yeah, I'm going with the Saints. Yeah. Oh, no. Patriots, Titans. Yeah, Patriots, Patriots and Titans. Boy, some ugly matchups. Some ugly matchups. Give me the Patriots this game. Ah, uh, well, then again, is Drake May playing? He's questionable. Questionable. Damn. This is a coin toss game. Who who's at home? Who's on the road? Tennessee's home. Okay, I'll go with I'll go with Tennessee this game. I think the defensive line could be a huge factor this game for the Tennessee Titans. They'll probably dominate. And uh I, I expect them to win this game. They're at home. Patriots team isn't all that good. I'll go with them. I'm going Patriots. Going Patriots. Yeah. I understand. I I can't pick Will Levis in good faith. Or Mason Rudolph. Whoever they got starting back there at this point. Yeah, good point. Legereus Sneed is out. Yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, Falcons and Cowboys. Oh, brother. I tell you what. This might be a slaughter. A slaughter? Wow. Why you say it's a slaughter? We have no Micah, no Bland. And no digs this Sunday. Mm. Kirk Cousins might throw for 500 yards, and I can't trust this offense at all. I said Mike McCarthy should have been canned weeks ago. So, I mean, the offense could show up, but I don't think they they, they are equipped to win a shootout. Mm. Not against the this Falcons offense with B. John Roberts. How are they going to stop? They, ain't, they probably ain't going to be able to stop the run. Mm. This is like pick your poison at this point. You either gonna let Kirk Cousins throw for a million yards, or you gonna let Bijan run all over you. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't trust this defense to show up. It's so so too many injuries, way too many injuries for them for me to think that they can win. The fact the Falcons are only favored by three and a half is insane to me. Wow, really? You know the Falcons team, they they've been kind yeah, of yeah, I know they they you know up and down or whatever, but I don't think it's one of them type of games. Okay. This 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 may be the backbreaker game for them Cowboys. So you going with the Falcons? Absolutely. I'm gonna go with the Falcons too. I just think they're the healthier team right now, and the Cowboys they just look like they're they're going in a decline. A lot of Falcons they're they're starting to rise a little bit. So yeah, give me the give me the Falcons this game. Um, I think that's it. Uh, is that is that it? Is that all the games? Am I missing one? Nope, I think we got all. All right, all right. Well, that'll do it for uh, week nine of the picks. We didn't, we didn't react to the Thursday night game, Houston versus the Jets. You know, there was a reason why the Jets were favored in this game. (laughs) (laughs) Houston, that that game was awful. Like for a good majority of the game, it was awful. Like I think at one point. Close to halftime, it was a donut for both teams. Yeah. Like there was no scoring at all, no field goals, no touchdowns, no nothing. It was it was just off. I didn't watch the game until like the very end. Thank God because I, I just couldn't stomach seeing something like that. The whole thing. <laughs> but yeah, man, um, the Jets offense looked a lot better than they did in previous weeks. Mm. Devontae Adams and Garrett Wilson were able to get it going. Yeah. Gary Wilson had that amazing catch, that amazing one-handed catch. He he did the MJ Michael Jordan pose, which was pretty cool with the one-handed catch. Devontae Adams was able to get a um a clutch touchdown pass. I don't know why the Houston Texans thought it was a good idea to have Devontae Adams one-on-one with that corner like that. Uh, that was a bit questionable, but ultimately they won the game. Aaron Rodgers had three touchdown passes. He probably played his best game of the season just the way that it was looking from a statistical standpoint uh but mm, the houston texans man like that offensive line is just not very good and 
they lost one of their um, starting offensive linemen yep. in the game. Green, yep. So now he's going to be out for the year. So that just really depletes your offensive line. It wasn't all that great in the first place, but now it's even worse. What, what was your thoughts on the game? What was your thoughts on the Texans, the Jets? How did you feel? I did not really enjoy my watch of this game. It's, it was like a few highlight plays, but most of the game was like, eh. It was pretty mad, but f- far the Jets go, the Jets, honestly, they weren't playing all that well in the first half at all. It's really like the second half they really started to get it going, and, you know, they, and you play, they got their playmakers to make some big plays for them, you know, like the Gary Wilson catching and the touchdown towards the end of the game with Devontae Adams. But other than that, I wasn't really impressed with the Jets' performance. And when they first started, I was like, well, it's Jets doing Jets things, but you can't let Aaron Rodgers – get away with mediocre play for a whole half and not punish him for it. Mm-hmm. And you won't, and the Texans only put up seven points. That ain't good enough. And, you know, the Jets' defense, they, they was – They did the thing. T- Hassan Reddick came back, and he was the difference maker for them. They was in the backfield all game. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, I can't even – Nah, I ain't going to say I can't blame Bobby Slowick this time. You can always blame Bobby Slowick. <laughs> but, uh, it's – I mean, dang, they, the, the the Texans are decimated. I mean, the offensive line getting cooked. Like, mm-hmm. the offensive line was bad. Yeah, I it mean, was very good bad. God. Very bad. Like, see, the straw was running for his life. Couldn't do much. And then the, the receivers, I mean, they tried. Tank Dell was, he, he did yeah. his thing. But outside of him. yards, but everybody else. I mean, you had Robert Woods out there. I mean, that's not ideal mm-hmm. in 2024. Mm-hmm. Joe Mixon was, he was running the ball pretty hard. But then the second half of the game, it was a little more quiet for him. Yeah. So, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. The Texans, yeah, I don't know how What was going. that trick play? That trick play in the but fourth they quarter? They had CJ Stroud running a fade Bob, route. Like, why? Like, why would you do that in that moment of the game when you're trying to come back and take the lead? It, that made no sense to me. Like, some of these some of these teams, like, the goal, like, just blasphemy for you to just – take that risk at that moment like I could understand if it was like in the first half you know what I mean like you're trying to do do a trick play gain some momentum but the fourth quarter it was like what was it five or six minutes left you're down in the game why would you do that it just and I think that was after was that after the um remember they uh they were kicking a field goal and and um the Jets one of the Jets People um, committed a flag or whatever. They did something wrong during the snap. I think I think they um, I don't. It did something to the to the person holding the snap or something like that. But the long snapper, I think they hit the Let long snapper or something like that. But regardless, the fact that you would do that at that moment, it, just, I, I, it was just blasphemous to me because. Bro, like, you're down in the game, it's in the fourth quarter, and you're trying to gain some sort of momentum. Put the ball in C.J. Stroud's hands. Why would you have Joe Mixon be the guy throwing the football? Like, it just it just blowed my mind. Like, I, I just thought, like, wow, Bobby Slowick, you, you've done it again. You've done it again. But, anywho, yeah, man, C.J. Stroud, 11 for 30. Just That's just not going to do it. Zero touchdowns. He had a 27 QBR. Uh, it was just awful, man. And a lot of it is not his fault, but my God, you got to do better He was than missing that. some open dudes some eight times, though. It just seems like this this offensive line, like the, the bad offensive line play is really getting to him. Yeah. And that's what happens. Like it Messes up your whole rhythm, your timing. You start getting paranoid. Like, okay, now you're like, oh, my goodness, I'm about to get hit. Yeah. Doesn't seem comfortable this year. With with this um offensive line compared to last year, he he felt a lot more relaxed. He felt like he was in a groove last year, even even without Stephon Diggs. Like he had Tank Dell and he had Neville Collins. And when Tank Dell went out, even he was still able to go through his progressions. He was still able to do a lot of the things that made him one of the better QBs in the NFL. This year, it's a lot different. Like he just seems like he's something is missing. He he doesn't seem like there's a certain flow. Like he seems out of sorts at times and. They have to figure out a way to get him back on track because you're not going to be able to really do anything in the playoffs if this offensive line continues to play this way. And 
they're lucky that they're in a bad division because if they were in a better division, then they would be in a lot of trouble right now. They're six and three, but in a more competitive division, that six and three it, it doesn't look too well right they, now. They they've been skating by. Yeah, with, they've been skating. with their kicker been coming in a clutch. He missed a few last. He did uh, Thursday. He did, and um, that was huge for them. So, all right. I feel like this is a team that's going. Go Falter. down, fall down yeah. mm-hmm. as the season goes on. Unless they try to make a trade, but who who out there can you tra- Can you g- get a good offensive lineman? Yeah, like, it's, teams it's not that ain't trading linemen. No, I tell you that much. No, it's not. It's not that easy unless like there's a team that's really tanking, like really tanking for a number one pick. I just don't see any teams try to do that right now. So you're gonna have to go out there, try to get somebody off of um you know free agency. I don't know. Squad, something. I don't, I don't know. know, but it's uh, it's just bad. It's a bad look right now. That's why it's important to invest in the trenches instead of going out there and signing or trading for. Well, they did a try receiver. to invest in the trenches. They just not pl- working out. Not like they working they, out. they signed Larry Mitonsu. They no, drafted, Larry Mitonsu for sure. They, dra- they there, drafted right? Kenyon Green. I think they drafted another lineman, another old lineman. They just not playing well. Well. They didn't. They didn't have their first round pick because of um, the trade with uh, Carolina, right? From twenty twenty four. Because remember, oh yeah, Because yeah. remember, remember that they um they selected C J Stroud, and then they um traded their first round pick for next season because of Will Anderson Jr. So right, right. right. So you, you don't have the opportunity. I mean, I hey, Will Anderson Jr. C J Stroud, amazing players, obviously, but. You won't, you're not going to be able to draft a, a good offensive lineman unless you, you really are good at developing. <laughs> so That yeah. is true. Yeah. Then you got to go out there and, and get somebody in free agency that's a difference maker at least. Pay them pay pay a lot of money for them instead of just trying to trade for Stephon Diggs, who's a, who's a really, really good player, but I, I feel like having a good offensive lineman is more valuable than just having, you know, a pretty decent receiver when your receiving core is already good as it is. That's true. I, okay, so, so yeah, they drafted Kenyon Green like two years ago. Mm-hmm. And they drafted Juice Scruggs, I think, last year, who's the center. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember what round, but it wasn't the first round. And, you know, they signed Laramie Tunsil. Obviously. Uh Tyus Howard, the Shaq Mason. He's kind of Shaq Mason's kind of getting up there in yeah, age. Yeah, yeah. It's, they just not they just not performing. They're not yeah, performing. Yeah, the interior the of that offensive line, the guard play, the center play isn't all that good. The tackles are okay, but that that interior they really need to invest in that interior because right now they're just getting beat up. They're getting dominated. It's just a bad look. C.J. Stroud he he has to run for his life half of the time and. It just doesn't look good for the offense at all. So, nope. All right. Let's go to the next topic on the list. Let's go to the final topic, and it is the QB tier list. Our 2024 QB tier list halfway through the season, and I'm excited for this because last year I enjoyed it. This year I'm going to enjoy it even more. We're going to give you our halfway point of the season QB tier list, and then we're going to give – our end of the season QB tier list. You know how this goes, but um, let me get mine real quick. Oh, Jordan Love is expected to play Sunday. But again, like I said, it doesn't really, <laughs> it doesn't really matter if he plays or not. I still have the Lions winning that game. So let's get it started. All right. So let me give you guys my tier list. So he's him is the best. He's a dude is the next is the um the lower like you're good like you you're playing really really well but you're not just you're not the best yet he's him is like MVP caliber he all right is you you've been okay but you haven't been great you you've been okay mid is you know mid you know mid mid we don't really need to explain bad but not the worst he stinks and then small sample size so those are my those are my how I rank everything. So, without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start off with small sample size. I have Drake May, I have Joe Flacco, and I have Tua. These are QBs that have not played a fourth of the season. Like, they haven't played four games. Like, all these QBs have played 
at most three games. Let's go to He Stinks, Deshaun Watson, Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, Bryce Young, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, and Andy Dalton. He stinks. Oh, and Daniel Jones. So, those are the QBs that are he stinks. Bad, but not the worst. Aaron Rodgers, Jacoby Brissett, Derek Carr, Trevor Lawrence. Let's Mm. go to mid. (laughs) This is going to shock some people. Dun da da da. Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, you're bugging. Uh oh. I'm going to I don't agree with that. Some feathers. I know I know you don't agree with me with that. Dak Prescott. That's fair. And Justin Fields. In the mid tier. Yeah, he's on the mid tier. Okay. All right. He I Matthew Stafford. Whoa. <laughs> I knew I was going to ruffle some feathers on that one. Justin Herbert. Kirk mm. Cousins, Baker Mayfield, Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, C.J. Stroud, Sam Darnold, Bo Nix, Geno Smith, Caleb Williams. Matter of fact, I take that back. I might put Geno Smith on mid-tier. Okay. I'm, I'm going to put Geno Smith on mid-tier. I'm going to move him. And Caleb Williams, I'm going to put on mid-tier. So, let me repeat that. Matthew Stafford, Justin Herbert, Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield, Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, C.J. Stroud, Sam Darnold, Bo Nix are all on he, ah, uh, I, and mid-tier is Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Justin Fields, Caleb Williams, Geno Smith. Okay. Let's get to he's a dude. I have three QBs. I have Jaden Daniels, I have Joe Burrow, and I have Jordan Love. Okay. Yeah. Now, he's him. I mean, we all know. We all know. It's it's Josh Allen, it's Lamar Jackson, it's Jared Goff. So, if you notice, I have been a bit more strict on the he's a dude and he's him tier. Last year, I had a lot more dudes on he's a dude. This year... I'm being a little bit more strict on that. I feel like you got to do a lot it's more. Like the inverse, because I'm I'm the inverse. I know, time. I know, I yeah. know. No. You you're a little bit more lenient on the way that you do things. But that is my list. We'll get to yours now. Hi. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna start from the bottom up, like you did. Um, I'm not even gonna bring this one up. Obviously, you got the people that haven't played or the injured players. So you know, whatever. Um. This tier is the not enough reps tier. I got to see more, um, which would be Drake May, Flacco, uh, Russell Wilson, even though Russell Wilson's been playing good, but it's only been two games. I so. forgot Russell Wilson. Yeah, Russell Wilson. And I ain't really seen too much. I guess you could throw Tua on there too because he, he, he missed a whole lot of games this year. So, so there, that's the not enough reps. This tier that you called the co- the one that you called um he stinks yeah this one is called put the fries in the bag because, oh, because these dudes are playing like they need to be working somewhere else and not in the NFL and that tier is Daniel Jones, Aiden O'Connell, Deshaun Watson, Anthony Richardson. I, I put him on yeah. there too. Will Levis and Bryce Young. Mm. Put the fries in the bag, bro. And <laughs> <laughs> this tier. This is called the – oh, wait, did I put this in the wrong one? Oh, well, this is called – this is the hot and cold tier. Okay. And this tier consists of Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. Bo Nix, and Justin Fields. Oh, putting Bo Nix yep. in that? He won Rookie of the Month. He's hot and cold. Oh, my God. He's okay. hot. He's hot. Okay, some bro. games he'd, he'd have that Panthers game, but then some games he'd have the, uh, the Jets game. Okay. And it's like, ugh. We we just need to see a little more consistency. I like Bo Nix, honestly, but okay, okay. all right. This is the B tier. This is the tier of QBs. They either haven't been playing up to their standard, or they're just playing. Uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay. You might not like this, but Jordan Love. What? Jordan Love oh, is you on here. Your damn mind. Jordan Love's on here. What? Kirk Cousins is on here. Kyler Murray's on here. Hertz is on here. Okay. 
Purdy's on here. Okay. Dak is on here. Okay. Gino's on here. Okay. Trev is on here. Okay. Donald is on here. Okay. And Caleb is on here. Uh, you're missing somebody. Who? The Frog Man. Kermit the Frog. Pat Mahomes? Yeah, you're missing Kermit the Frog. <laughs> I know I I probably should, but you trust you. You're not gonna like where I put him on on this. Okay, on go go ahead. I'm All right, the A tier. This is the t- this is like you can be put in the top ten tier in my opinion. Okay. Golf. Okay. Stroud, Stafford, Burrow, Herbert, Baker, and brrr, we got a rookie on the list, Jaden Daniels. Okay. You can put all of them dudes in the top ten, and I honestly wouldn't even argue about it. Right. Now, the S tier. These are the dudes that's upper echelon at the position. Of course, I got to put Pat Mahomes in. I know, I know everyone's like, oh, he's not. Pl-. Listen, let, let me tell you something. Until Mahomes starts losing games and being the reason why they lose, he's staying in the S tier. I'm sorry. It is what it is. I know it's like, oh, you're going off previous work. Absolutely. When it's a dude like Mahomes, there's no way I'm putting them anything less than that. He, they are the only undefeated team in the league, and they just and he's getting better. He had a, he had a way better game last uh, week than previous. Before. I'm putting him in S tier until, until he gives me clear-cut a reason why I shouldn't. Then we got Lamar Jackson, obviously. And then we got Josh Allen, the big three. This this is pretty much solidified, set in stone. I don't really see that changing for the rest of the year. So 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 wait a minute. The S tier is you you put Lamar, you mm-hmm. put Josh Allen, Mahomes. That's it. Yes. No Jared Goff. He's in the A tier. See, I w- what I was going to do first. I was going to do an MVP tier, an MVP like mm-hmm. running tier. I was going to put Goff, Lamar in. Mm-hmm. But I decided against. You know, it. this is for the season, right? This is this season, not not previous work. This season, I'm still putting. My- You're unbelievable. You're unbelievable. You know, you know, people are gonna point to how hypocritical you are from last season with with, with Purdy, right? You know, people are gonna be like, "Well, Purdy was playing great football. He's playing better football than Mahomes, and they were winning games." And you put him on this tier. Why? But you put Mahomes on an S tier. Purdy had. All the offensive weapons you could imagine. Mahomes has Kareem Hunt. So? So? Does it excuse him from throwing that? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And that little touchdowns? It doesn't. He Before last week's game, Mahomes has he not. Thrown he, did, he didn't throw a passing touchdown before, before last week's game. So what does that say about Mahomes? Does he, does he really deserve S tier? Just off a name. What QB you taking over Mahomes? Jared Goff. You're crazy. What you You're mean? You're taking Jared Goff over Pat Mahomes this year. I'm sa- he's played way better. Yes, absolutely. You're crazy. What What do you mean crazy. I'm crazy? I'm who's, not taking no QB in the played, league over Pat Mahomes. Who's played better this season? It's not about if oh if we had a draft, you pick a QB that you well, want to dudes, run your franchise. When you got a when you got a guy like Mahomes, you got to bend the rules a bit. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. He hasn't played well. It's okay. It's okay. Nope, not doing it. You you just kind of biased towards. Yeah, us. I am. At least you admit it. I mean, Shoot, you're lucky. I put Dak in. The, I was going to put. Dak in the A tier, but I see you know he ain't been playing good ball this year. He's he's playing mid. Yeah. Mid. Honestly, I was gonna make a ski mask uh tier list mm-hmm. where people that QBs that got paid but ain't before. I was gonna put Dak on the yeah. ski mask yeah. tier yeah. list. Yeah, I don't know. You know, that's your list. We see things differently. That's fine, but I'll put how okay. I, the lowest I'll put my homes is A tier. That's that's fine. I can you know what I can agree with that. We can come to a compromise. You want to put Mahomes on A tier, then all all be it cool. Me personally, I just think he's been playing like mid this year. I'm a yeah. I'm a bit more I'm a bit more um critical of QB performances. See the um, thing is like I know Mahomes ain't been great at all or up to his standard. Yeah, or, way up like, to his standard. Yeah, but. <laughs> Bro, you take you take the name. Oh my goodness, he has nine, eight TDs, nine interceptions. Oh my goodness. You take, bro, take <laughs> take the name off of the jersey. Oof. Just take the name off of the jersey. There's Jeez. no way you put him on S tier. There's no way. There's no way he's he's even close to S tier. 
if if, if that was Derek Carr instead of Mahomes, he'd be and put the fries. He'd be in the he'd be put put the <laughs> fries in a black bag, bro. That is Trevor Lawrence rookie year numbers. I know, I know where the you don't want to look at the stats like, oh, y'all going off a box score. But, bro, I've watched games. Mahomes is not playing well. Like, he throws some of the most boneheaded interceptions. I remember when he first came in the league, folks was like, dog, like, he, he has so many turnover worthy plays, but he gets away with it somehow. He doesn't turn the football over. Well, now he's not getting away with it. Now it's actually coming back to bite him. He looks more. He's man, he looks terrible. But they're winning games. They're six and oh. That defense is amazing. That running game is amazing. The running scheme for that Chiefs team is amazing. You just plug and play any running back and for whatever reason it works. The defense with Chris Jones and um Trent McDuffie, they they're they've been tremendous. And all Mahomes has has got had to do is just be a game manager, um, be clutch when it matters most, and that's about it. Is that really? Yeah, I am uh, going off his name on this one. I will admit, I will admit. We have a, we're going to have another QB tier list, that like end true. of the season QB tier list. So he could always bounce back. Like this is just the first QB tier list of the season. I'm just going off a of halfway of the season. I just think he's been playing like mid. A lot of people are going to disagree with me because a lot of people are biased towards Patrick Mahomes. How dare you talk bad about <laughs> the GOAT Mahomes? Like people wearing the hair hairdo and everything mm. like that, trying to trying to dick ride him and all that like we we get it <laughs> Mahomes Dylan, Rayola, is, Dylan Rayola will be the first one we, in the we get it we get it he's he's in a he's in a an all-time great quarterback has more range than Aaron Rodgers blah 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 but we gotta be we gotta be real about this he, okay I'll put him in I'll put him in I'll put him in B tier okay all right now nah, if you want if you want to keep him there keep him there I'm hey it's all good I'm just I'm just arguing with you why why wouldn't why I have him in mid tier right now, but you know. that's your list. That is your list. I have my list. Anybody? I'm also fact like I'm factoring like situations with these dudes because yeah, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. He doesn't have the greatest situation offensively. But well, as far as personnel, he has is now coaching wise. Andy Reid's amazing. Yeah, but, but personnel's like oof. But let but let's let's compare. Two years ago, when they won the Super Bowl against the Eagles. Personnel wasn't all that great, but they still had a top five offense. Mahomes won the MVP. So what? What's the difference? Well, Travis Kelsey was younger. Yeah, you're right. He they, is. Uh, Pacheco wasn't hurt. You're right, but he was a rookie. True, he, he had a, a lot more juice. But um, and like the dudes, I don't know. Man. <laughs> they they relying on Xavier Worthy and it's like he he can only do. Well, they so relying much. on McCole Hartman. At they? least they traded for D Hop, so we should see some better numbers moving forward. Right, but even when they even with um even when they had um Rasheed Rice, it was Rasheed Rice and Xavier Worthy. He wasn't playing well, and Rasheed Rice is better than DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. So, you what, know, what game was that Rasheed Rice? Got hurt. What was that game? That's a good. Cool, that's a good <laughs> point. Um, damn. I want to say that was the Chargers game. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the Chargers it was game. the Chargers game. It was the Chargers game. So that was like he week was, three. That, yeah, that was week four. Week four. So, you know, he was. He was still playing yeah, bad. His touchdown. He was pretty much even touchdown interception ratio. It was. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I ain't going. You know what? It is what it is, man. It well, is let, let's let the people decide. Yeah, let's, let's let the, the people, people decide. decide. Where do y'all think Mahomes should be ranked? Should he be closer to mid tier or to S tier? Yes, let the people. I'll probably Try put that as a poll. Remove the jersey. Remove I'll, the jersey. I'll put that as a poll. Yeah, you I'll, put I'll, that I'll, poll, I'll pull yeah. that and then y'all can vote yourselves. All right. That'll do it for another episode of the Courtside View Podcast. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the notification bell, follow the socials, and we'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching, and peace. Salute. Just let me be, be.